so the visionary. So he goes to Karna and tells him who he is. So for the first time, he realizes, my God, I'm not an OBC. I'm a Kshatriya. Not only am I a Kshatriya, but I'm a royal Kshatriya. Not only a royal Kshatriya, but I'm the eldest. And so Krishna says, look, with you and Arjun on our side, we'll conquer the earth and we'll win this war. So he asks him to switch his switch sides because he says, when we win the war, you will be king as the eldest Pandava and Draupadi will be yours. Imagine everything that he always wanted on a plate. But it's a tribute to Karna that he does not switch sides. And listen to what he says, Raj. He says, your mother is not the one who gives birth to you, but the one who brings you up. And I would write that on every blackboard in every school in India, sure. in a caste society. You know, the Mahabharat Raj is a very dark story. Everybody dies in the end. How many billion, and the winners. Of people. Somebody said 18 million people. I don't know where they came no, from. No, I don't know. I mean, it's a huge number. There's always, I mean, it's an epic, you know. So lots of people all the time. I <laughs> <laughs> but everybody, it's like, it's really like a Second World War. Think of it like that. And they, the epic thinks of it as a world war. And, uh, but what I'm saying is, the victors have to rule over an empty kingdom at the end. So dark. But I'm convinced that the Mahabharat snatches victory in moments like these of Karna. And you know, at the end of the epic, that wonderful moment when Yudhishthira is going to heaven, and a stray dog attaches itself to Yudhishthira. And together they walk, not looking at each other, looking straight, and they reach heaven. And out comes the heaven keeper, Indra, the god, Indra. And Indra says, welcome great king, we have waited for this moment. And Yudhishthira, instead of going into heaven, says, but what about this dog? And Indra says, he's not even your dog. He's just a dirty street dog. Besides, this is heaven. No dogs allowed. <laughs> and Yudhishthira wonders, what sort of a place is this which does not understand the ABC of Dharma? That if somebody comes to you for refuge, you help them out. And besides, we're not on the earth where somebody can look after this dog. We're somewhere up there. And so he refuses to go into heaven. Now, I bet you nobody in this room would have done what Yudhishthira did. But every child in every culture will understand the meaning of dharma from this story. Beautiful. And so what is the Mahabharata trying to say? I think it's saying that, look, this world is dark. We are all flawed. We don't know about dharma. Yudhishthira is still looking for dharma at the end of the epic. But an act of goodness is one of the few things that we possess in this world. To transcend all the, uh, the evil or the, uh, the bad for intentions. Me, for me, that is the bottom line of the you Mahabharata. Know, uh, you've had the story of Karna, I thought was very moving. Just imagine how well Karna would have done if Thai had been around. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Uh, now, we've got a very informed audience here, you know, future leaders and, uh, uh, from Sloan School of Management, people from the Thai community, the AIF community. And why don't we open it up for questions? And, uh,
So one thing that's been in the news recently besides the Commonwealth Games is the Ayodhya verdict. And I guess that's, an, that's one case where I'm not sure how I feel about it because on the one hand it has preserved the peace and on the other hand it's rationalized, uh, legitimized uh, an act of vandalism essentially. So in the context of So it's of exactly the same about, question that Raj talked about, yep. the means and the ends. Yep. The <coughs> judges of the court behaved like Vidura. They looked at the consequences and they said that if it will help preserve harmony in this society. This is what we would do. And the possibility of another kind of verdict, creating riots across the country, they diffused. So they behaved like Vidura. But Yudhishthira may not have done that. He would have looked more to the means in this case. And that's really how you can see how the Mahabharata is helping you to think through. I mean, when, when the Satyam scandal took place, everybody said greed. And I said, no. The failing of Ramalingam Raju in the Satyam story was that the family, the Raju family, their stake in Satyam had gone down to only 7%. 7.4%. So, he could not ensure succession for his children. And so he, did, he created two companies, the Mehta's companies, infrastructure, real estate, and he stole $7.5 billion from one company in order to, from that, to give to the other. So, it raises the question, as to what is our duty to our children? Our duty, is it to give them an education, uh, sort of make them... Or some parents see it as leaving each one a house, leaving each one a car, leaving each one a company. Where do you, what is the right duty for, of a parent? So it's Dhrit, the problem is Dhritarashtra's problem not Duryodhan's problem of greed. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful comments. Uh, I've been a great fan of your writing uh, since uh, the, the, the last book that you wrote. And I love the fact that you can tie in very intricate concepts with very uh, simplistic real-life examples, like the one you gave about your uh, neighbor whom you were uh, envious about. Coming back to the question of uh, Yudhishthira in, in your book, uh, you have evolved, your notion of Yudhishthira has evolved over the book. You start off with a very uh, idealistic picture of somebody who always sees the means, uh, just defying the ends, and somebody who always does the right thing, but in the end he also evolves to somebody who, who looks at the situation and then decides what is the right yeah. thing to do. Yeah. And that's the essential message of your book also, that yeah. be good but not like, do not let other, other people to take advantage of you. Yeah. Do you think uh, Yudhishthira would have been happy with that message? Uh, well, I don't know whether you disturbed. He suffers enormous remorse at the end of the war. He's like Ashoka, you know, in Kalinga. But that point you have made is absolutely right. That Yudhishthir changes. It is finally Yudhishthir who gives the order to when he declares war. And the message of the Mahabharata is that when it comes to a ruler, you have to judge a ruler in a different way than we judge ourselves. That in the public, public acts, you know, you talk, we talk about Lalit Modi and the IPL. Well, I wrote this piece, you know, you saw it on my yes, blog, it yes. appeared in Indian, uh, in, in, in Business Standard. And Lalit Modi has gone from being public hero number one to public enemy number one. And people don't know what to make of it. But Vidura would say that look at the consequences also. That look at the amazing, to millions of people he has given joy. He has done the best thing for the players. He's finally made, they can have a living. New players have come up as a result of all the spaces created. And he has gone, if you're an entrepreneur, he has taken something from zero to four billion in three years. 
and uh, whether you are television, everybody has won. BCCI won, the ratings won, the people won, everybody won. And I'm convinced that IPL could not have been created without him. It needed that entrepreneurial zeal. Energy. It's interesting, there are many stories even in the US which sort of parallels that. If you look at the Kennedy family, you know, they have, they've contributed a lot, you know, uh, president and senators. But if you look at how the Patriot made his money, it was, uh, you know, during the prohibition. And, and he created a dynasty, you know, which really had a big impact, a positive impact in the US. So, so in a way, uh, you know, as you said, there are no right answers or wrong answers. It's, it's a question of... Well, you have to think through. And I think